Hashtag cancel culture has come to the Locked on Predators podcast today. We asked you what your hockey takes are that would get you playfully canceled by the rest of hockey Twitter. We got some doozies. We're going to share them and ours coming up in a little bit. And we also have a very big game for the Nashville Predators tonight at the Ottawa Senators. Can they keep that momentum from Minnesota rolling against a lesser opponent, plus a couple of storylines from that game, including Mark Borowiecki's return, all coming up today on the Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and editor at, at OnTheForeCheck.com, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I am Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at OnTheForeCheck.com. Nashville Predators, can they make it two in a row tonight against the Ottawa Senators? Uh, it is a 6 o'clock central puck drop mm-hmm. in the nation to our North's nation's capital. Um, and this is going to be kind of an interesting one, Anne, because what do we always say about the Nashville Predators? We've been saying it for quite mm-hmm. some time now. Uh, they seem to play their competition. You just had a big win over the Minnesota Wild. Kind of made everybody feel a little bit better about the playoff push. And now all of a sudden, here you go, a team that's not as good and a team in which the Predators struggled with a couple weeks ago, even though they got that 4-1 win, they didn't exactly look good while doing it. I think in some ways this game is more important or will, not more important, but will tell us more about the Nashville Predators than the Minnesota Wild game because of the very reason you said. This team tends to play to the level of their opponent. It's something they've wrestled with this season. It's definitely something they've wrestled with in March that has cost them some points can't do that right now. We're at a point in this season where the Predators need the two points from the games that are quote unquote easy games. No games are easy in the NHL, but games where roster talent wise, the Nashville Predators match up favorably. So tonight's game feels like a big game because can the Nashville Predators who played on Tuesday night show up in Ottawa on Thursday night? It's a big question. Yeah, and it's one in which the Predators haven't really ans- answered mm-hmm. the right way this year. You know, a bunch of times where they'll come out with a very, very strong stretch against good teams, and we're looking at them and saying, hell yeah, this is this is the team uh, that we need the Predators to come out strong against, and then they sort of drop the ball uh, mm-hmm. when they have stretches that you would consider easy, like most of the month of March, which is kind of why we're in this um, – I guess on pins and needles sort of sort of talk about going into the playoffs. Um, it, it's going to be interesting me. And one of the big keys is this is like chemistry 200 level Okay. in this game, you know, with the chemistry after those, we had the big line changes, mm-hmm. John Hines kind of shuffled everything up um, and it paid off against Minnesota does that new look Nashville Predators forward core have the same sort of vibe tonight that they did against Minnesota? Can they keep that momentum going? Are they going to keep building off of each other? And I think when you start something new, there's always a little more attention to detail. You're always just uh, subconsciously uh, slightly dialed in a different way when you're, the lines are switched up, you're playing with somebody different. And we saw that in the execution with Minnesota. And when you look at some of these games that the Predators have dropped against Seattle, against Buffalo, although Buffalo is not a shabby team, but against Philadelphia, the biggest problem really was execution. So if 
they're still as dialed in as they had to be when the lines were switched up. I think this could really be a, a good game tonight for the Nashville Predators. You just can't get too comfortable. There's something about poking the bear that elevates your game. And John Hines kind of poked the bear when he switched up these lines. Hopefully that will carry over. But I'm telling you, this game feels like uh, a character game to me, even more so than the Minnesota Wild did, because this is something the Predators have got to get over. And quite frankly, they have got to get two points tonight. Yes. Uh, I mean, although I will say Vancouver kind of helped the Preds out a little bit last night with a 5-1 win over the Vegas Golden Knights. Oh, poor so, Vegas. So much for that easiest remaining schedule. <laughs> I uh, know. It was so great. <laughs> it, it was, yeah. Uh, that's like the the one uh, instance I feel like we can all collectively cheer for one team crashing and burning. A hundred percent. I am here for that. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, to, to build off that, you know, we, we talk about staying focused and it's very weird that we're talking about um, a game on the road this late in the season against a team that's way out of the playoff picture with this much importance Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it kind of goes back to we really haven't seen the Predators trot out a strong effort against sort of weaker opponents. Um, and it, it kind of goes into the the conversation about mental focus. Like, where's the Predators mental focus right now? Before that Minnesota game, you know, you saw the quotes, you heard everything from John Hines uh, about this being a playoff atmosphere. Like the Predators need to have a playoff you know, headspace from here right. on out, you know, we're going to go to this game. We're going to dominate this game. We're going to focus. We're going to have tunnel vision tonight. We're doing the same thing we did last time. We're laser focused, worried about this game. We're not going to be looking down the road at anything. We're not going to be looking at the standings. We're just going to do what we can, which is win the game tonight. Um, and you get the sense that that really hasn't been, sort of the case for the Predators this season. Um, whether it's just been, you know, looking too far down the road, maybe kind of seeing this as, you know, in the big picture tonight's kind of an easy game. We can kind of take our foot off the gas. Right. Uh, so that to me, it's like going to be the focus. And it, we're going to find out within that first five, 10 minutes of the game where the Predators mindset is. Uh, because that Minnesota game was the best start they've had um, in any game for a very, very long time. I mean, that was the sharpest I've seen them out of the gate. Um, in a long yeah. time. It's, it's, it was a Sharks 8-0 win. Uh, right. So, yeah, we're going to find out early where the Predators' headspace is at. Uh, because if they come out looking like they did before Minnesota – uh, that sort of lackadaisical focus, not really there, complacent sort of hockey. This is going to be another long game. The Predators have done a really good job improving things like mental toughness, their intensity level and that kind of thing. I think we can all agree that over the tenure of John Hines here, we've really seen this be a huge focus for the team. But this is where it's going to matter because we've talked about this so many times. This April schedule is so brutal for the Nashville Predators. They are facing so many playoff teams and you've got to take these games that you should win and you need to win. You know, they're playing Florida Panthers this weekend. Now, where are you more likely to get two points? You would think it's going to be against Ottawa, but the way Nashville has handled some of these games this season, you just don't know. And I agree with you. The first five, 10 minutes of this game, they have got to come in with their own intensity and not let the other team set more of a less intense or more relaxed or more um, casual almost vibe to it because this game matters in you know for Nashville whether they're playing against a playoff team or not this game matters they need points yeah and it's going to be tough to get because this is mm -hmm. um an Ottawa team playing with a lot like yeah. a lot there's a lot of stuff going on right now 
There's a lot of people on that team fighting for jobs next year. There's a lot of young players um, trying to finish the season strong so they can, you know, sort of develop heading into next year. Um, and, you know, it's going to be an emotional night for a lot of fans in Ottawa because you have Mark Borowiecki coming back into town for the first time since he joined the Predators in kind of a complicated situation there. Um, yes. Fan-wise, fan wise, uh, this is going to be a loud, loud positive ov- um, ovation for Boro. Uh, he was absolutely beloved there in Ottawa. Yes. He was Carlson's partner for, for quite some time, uh, including some of his strongest seasons. So, you know, this is this is going to be, you know, a, a good night for him, a good night to return, but also a little bit bittersweet for Borowiecki. Um, and this is a, like a very complex situation, obviously, but um, it's been documented that there's been some sort of there's some sort of bad blood uh, between him and Eugene Melnick, who, of course, recently passed away within the past week. So, you know, for him, there's, you know, he's coming back to, you know, it's going to be a very complicated kind of emotionally draining possibly for Boro for a lot of different reasons. Um, And that kind of, you know, goes back into what we talked about. Are the Preds focused, you know, is, is a player like Boro, going to use some of that complexity to drive him and have him lasered in, or is that going mm-hmm. to take him out of that? And that kind of goes back into what we were talking about, about focus. Yeah. The other thing that needs to happen tonight uh, is that the big guys need to play big in some of these games that the Predators have dropped, especially even in the last game against Ottawa on March 29th. Our big players, Forsberg, Duchesne, Yossi, they just weren't in the game. Michael McCarron was the hero of the game. So just take a minute. Michael McCarron, (laughs) fourth liner, was the hero of that game um, in so many ways. Tanner Janot scored and Matt Duchesne had an empty net goal. But we didn't see the execution with the top guys like we have to see from them consistently. And so there's a little mental gymnastics that they need to do as well to be dialed in. And we've got to see that top, the top line, the top two lines, however Heinz is combining them, we need to see them come out and play with some intensity Uh, immediately uh, right from puck drop because that's how they're going to be able to win games the rest of this month. Well, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to rely on Michael McCarron tonight. Uh, A couple of lineup notes about tonight's game coming up in just a second, including will Ellie Tolvanen get another chance? He was healthy scratch last game. Uh, Is he going to get a chance to prove himself tonight? Talk about that in a second. Plus, we asked you what hockey takes would get you canceled. Playful canceled, not not actual canceled. Uh, We we asked you guys that. You have sent in some doozies. We're going to go through them. I kind of debate it here in a hot second. First, though, want to mention today's show brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. It is a big week for sports. We got the Masters Championship starting today. Let's see if Tiger Woods can uh, add another Cinderella story to his list. Lots of also good, intriguing young players hoping for that green jacket it's going to be an interesting tournament if you want to put some money on it you can tune in to bet online they have all of your latest masters developments as well as some odds podcasts and reviews for all of the action this weekend plus bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering needs any other sport they got live betting for nhl nba any other thing you can think of. They also got eSports scores and your favorite Vegas casino games. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. A couple of lineup notes from John Hines. Ellie Tolvanen back in the lineup. Uh, He appears to be replacing Michael McCarron, who not sure if that is due to some sort of injury or if John Hines just wants to shake things up again. 
Um, the, what it's going to be big for Tolvanen. It's going to be really interesting to see how he responds um, after being a healthy scratch, and that kind of being a big takeaway from that Minnesota game. Uh, even even though the Preds won six to two, a lot of people were talking about Tolvanen not in the lineup the next day. Yeah, this was an interesting move by John Hines, but I will say this. I feel like Hines has been very uh, patient with the struggles of that second line with Cunnan and Tolvanen this season. I think he's really given them time to sort of work their way out of it. I feel like then he switched Mikhail Granlin to that line, and Granlin and Tolvanen have had some good chemistry in the past. So I think he's taken the little steps to sort of reset things or to give these players time to work their way out of it, and it just hadn't worked now there is the whole discussion of why Tolvanen and not Cunning, but you know that's that's a whole discussion too but I really like this move for Ellie Tolvanen because I feel like he just naturally comes to the ice with a little bit more pressure because he showed up uh, on Nashville's radar in in the development system with such a reputation for his offense and his shot and while he has developed all these other areas of his game and he is a just such a better all-around player, the one area that he's known for has been the area he struggled in. And I feel like that just puts a lot of pressure on a young guy who has a long career ahead. So I kind of feel like this game is just a way to release some of that steam, release some of that pressure, give him a chance to exhale. And I like that he's coming back in. I think McCarran out is an interesting move, but hey. Yeah, not not exactly sure I agree with that one. Um, yeah. Unless there is some kind of injury. Um, right. Especially because Tolvanen's a winger and McCarran's a center. So now you're, you're thinking there's probably going to have to be some sort of shuffling again, mm -hmm. unless Nick Cousins is moving over to play center. Um, so, so it's going to be interesting. The, the thing with Tolvanen, we saw this a little bit with Phil Tomasino and a lot of people have referenced this, um, in the past 24 hours when talking about Tolvanen, um, of course, everybody was sort of expecting Phil Tomasino to be, you know, sort of the, the shiny new toy at the beginning of the year and come out and, and sort of have an immediate impact. And, you know, he didn't get a lot of chances early on in the season. Very true. Um, yep. and, and, you know, kind of around November, December, we got to the point where John Hines kind of, you know, would periodically healthy scratch him. Um, and then over the past couple of months, in a time in which um, Tomasino has been more consistently in the lineup, he's gotten better. Um, so we've seen that from John Hines. It's like, you know, it, it's almost as if it's like a healthy scratch, not to say like, you know, you're playing bad. We need other people in the lineup. It's almost like a healthy scratch to say, you know what? Take a break. Yes. Take a day off. Yes. Figure out, like, you know, just kind of get your head on straight. And, you know, when you're back in the lineup, maybe you'll have kind of like a new perspective, a new focus, a new sort of freshness, um, which, which is, you know, it, it's, we've seen it paid off before with a couple of different players. So, uh, you know, I get that same vibe for Tolvin in tonight. Heinz has been so complimentary of Ellie Tolvin and through the last, you know, 48 hours as he's answered questions about the healthy scratch and said, you know, this isn't anything about his game not being good. It's just a chance to reset. And like you said, we've seen this work with Phil Tomasino. And while it isn't as fun as a spectator to see kind of these new big shots sitting and resting. I think it's a long-term investment that will pay off. And right now at this point in the season, is there any other time where you mo more want somebody like Ellie Tolvanen to kind of activate his game? So at this point, I think this is how you invest in him. And I'm excited to see him back in the lineup. I'm excited to see what he can do. And, you know, I hope that there's just not a ton of pressure on on him because I think he'll play better when that uh, that offensive pressure is off his back. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see where he slides into the lineup as well. Very true. Uh, probably not going to be a straight up position for position swap with McCarron. There's probably going to be a little bit more shuffling, so it'll be really interesting to see how this all plays out. 
Uh, again, six o'clock central puck drop tonight from Ottawa. Um, very weird that we're talking about, uh, you know, a, a game against a team that's second to last in the NHL with or in the Eastern Conference with this much intrigue. But, you know, hey, here. here that's this go. season. Like, that's this season. Um, all right. Let's get to the juicy stuff, shall we, Anne? Okay. <laughs> all right, so, uh, so on Twitter, there, you've probably seen it. There's kind of like this new trend going around where it's like we're canceling each other over blank takes today reply with your cancelable blank takes Mm -hmm. Uh, we've had some food takes we've had tv show takes uh and the one that's popped up today has been canceling each other over hockey takes so that got us thinking about the hockey takes that would get us playfully canceled keyword playfully not playfully not any sort of you know dark thing or whatever you know, we're, we're not going to bring up the, yeah, the NHL should have less inclusion because that's, <laughs> not, because that's not fun. No. no. These are the playful ones. Yes. Um, including the one that I thought was the Predators mustard jerseys, you know, the, the old third jerseys. Oh, yeah. I thought they were pretty sweet. Really? What, there's a lot of dead silence there. As I can tell, you're working up something that you want to say. I can see you holding no. back. <laughs> I can see you holding back just a little bit. Just lay, just lay it on me. Just lay it on me. I, okay, you, okay. You know, I like a little variety in my jersey, but the mustard, I mean, that, first of all, that color works on literally zero people. <laughs> And it just, it looks dirty. I think those jerseys look worn out and dirty, yeah. even the new ones. But, you yeah. know, I'm happy for you. <laughs> but but here's, here's the thing, though. Like, it's one of those things. And three years ago for SB Nation, we did a thing called the that like the there was like a series about like the worst jerseys in NHL history. Right. And, yeah. I, and I wrote it for the Preds uh, and I picked that jersey and went to town on it. And in those three years, I, you know, it's been like, I guess, I don't know if it's just nostalgia glasses, but the more like I look at it, the more I'm like, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> I think what we've been through this with the stadium series jerseys this season too, where we were appalled and then, you know, they made some modifications in our defense and then they grew on us and maybe it is a nostalgia thing, but I just don't, I think I, and so many people have said this, why are we not focused on Navy blue, Navy blue jerseys, not with weird print, but mustard, it's just not even, like, it doesn't even feel like it's the the right color wheel. I mean, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. But. You're I, saying this is it's like a major life choice. Like, do what you want. Do I mean, like, I'm happy for you. If you want to wear that, I'm not going to mock you openly. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I feel like it, I feel like it's my turn to mock you. Uh, oh. I want to yeah. hear another one. Okay, well, here is one the theater major in me believes that embellishment is the most underutilized call in hockey. There should be more embellishment calls. That's, yeah, that's not a take. I don't think so. So many people want it out of hockey. I've seen people say it shouldn't even be a call in hockey. And I'm like, it should be called almost as much as the tripping because half the tripping is embellishment. Oh yeah, we saw it the the other night too, uh, and I think part of the reason, first of all, like I, the one thing I think we need to get rid of is like the trip and the embellishment. I think Fair. it should be oh one yeah or the other because it's like yeah. you know we we've seen it with like uh, like a tripping call and it's like okay did he trip or did he take a dive right you know? it can't be both it, it can't be both like yeah. and I've seen be like. In, it, I've seen like arguments about that where it's like, well, you know, he did technically trip him, but the other person kind of made a show of it to get the call. No, that's the thing I think we need to take out. Like it is either a dive 
or it's a trip. And if it's one of those things where it's like, you know, it, it kind of is a trip and the other person just dove to get the call, then forget the trip and just take the dive out of it. Because if you're going to fall, you're going to fall. Like if it's a trip, right. you're going to fall. Um, you know, if you have to dive to get a call, then don't do it. I think it should just be called by itself a lot more. Like there was a game I was watching the other night and off the top of my head, I can't even tell you the two teams, but you, there, there were people like, like falling out all like all over the place, dropping like flies. And I'm like, you know, they weren't getting the call, but I'm like, why aren't you calling them for embellishment? Like I'm all for some razzle dazzle, but at some point I feel like embellishment needs to be called way more. Well, we had that uh, the Bruins Senators situation with Brad Marchand and Tim Stoltzla, where Marchand after the game was basically accusing Stoltzla of, of die or diving all the time and like embellishing getting high stick. And you know, so you saw a couple of Bruins go after him because of that. And then there's like some back and forth in the in the press in the post game. Um, so I mean, it, it's also like one of those things where it's it's not like soccer. You know, where it's just oh, gosh. a part of the game. Uh, in hockey, I feel like, you know, if you if you dive too much, um, you're going to get smacked in the face. Of <laughs> That's probably true. It's the it is far worse in soccer, men's soccer. Yeah. Any any kind of soccer. But mostly men's. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I've seen Kelly O'Hara kill some time before. Yeah. Um, mm here's a here's another one uh okay. this, this i feel like might be a actual cancelable take oh gosh uh, keith bennett says the preg never should have ditched 5150 as their power play song really Does anybody even remember that no the one month window in <laughs> the start of 2019 where the predators used brad paisley's like 5150 you know like how Tim McGraw did a custom version of mm -hmm. I Like It, I Love It for the goal song. Dirk Bentley did a custom version of 5150 for like a Predators power play. And it was, it wound up being like the second most hated thing about the Predators <laughs> that month. And we're going to get to the first. Oh, oh yes, we are. Um, yeah. D d I, can, I completely forgot that that happened until I saw that. Yeah. Oh, because that was just a blip. I mean, it wasn't, I don't think people even had time to register that. Another one. It was bad. It was bad. Yeah. Another one that I saw recently was somebody talking about the, um, the guitar sound when somebody comes out of the penalty box, since we're talking about penalty stuff. And I, I freaking love that. The twang? And the no. twang. No. Oh, oh, I freaking love it. No. I mean, okay, a lot of teams are doing it now. Like, it, it's kind of become a thing across the NHL. I think the abs were the first one I noticed because they did, like, the the Mario power. Oh, yeah. When yeah. people came out of the box. And then I think Vegas started doing, like, a coin sound. Mm -hmm. Um. So, it's yeah, it's just, like... Oh, I, I love that because you don't have to turn and look like you just know, hey, they, you know, hey, we're up, we're back. That's, that's what your goaltender is supposed to do. Like the. the oh, it, I don't like that. Th that's been, but that's what they've done for years. <laughs> but it doesn't mean it's good. I don't like that goaltender tap thing. I don't like that. Why? But I do Are like you afraid thing. they're going to like snap their stick or something like that? It feels. Um, it is anxiety producing in me. It feels like you're running out of time. You're running out of time. You're running. It's like the telltale heart. It's the telltale heart of hockey. I don't so like, like it. So like the countdown from five seconds is worse to you than like, you're just like sitting there minding your own business. And then you hear like, bam, 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 bam. That's how I want it to go. That's exactly how I want it to I, go. I feel like you're causing more anxiety, just throwing a random sound out there. No, well, because you know it's over. It's not like counting down, counting down. Oh my gosh, you better hang on. Oh, it's so close, but oh, it could still happen. Like you don't have that. You just have your better there -ner -ner, and you know it's all good. Strong, strong disagree. Okay. Uh, Brian Baston, our buddy, uh, has one that says international ice is better than the NHL ice. 
let them have room to be creative and make more plays. Interesting. Um, I remember, I think it was after 2002, the Winter Olympics there. Uh, because basically, if you don't know, NHL ice is 200 feet long by 85 feet wide. International ice is like a little bit shorter. It's like 196 feet, but uh, 200 or not 200, 100 feet wide. So it's a little, sh- it's like a little bit more rounded than elongated. Um, I remember the NHL tr- thought about this, like thought about going to international ice after 2002. Um when the Olympics happened and mm-hmm. was like kind of right when people were starting about the lockout. Um, and I think the main reason was just because the owners didn't want to reconfigure <laughs> the seating in the stadium. True. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like I, I don't disagree with it. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if I'd be like all in on it. I mean, it would be super fun to see like what, um teams like you know the Preds or or the mm-hmm. Tampa Bay Lightning or a player like Roman Yossi can do with like that extra 15 feet of space in the offensive zone how can yeah. he be there um you know it's not a hill I'm gonna die on but I think it'd be interesting I don't like the that they it, they haven't come together on this like how in the world have they not has this not come together and been uniform across the sport? Like this just seems so weird to me. So I would say pick one or the other and just everybody go with it. Yeah. Eh, I can see that. Yeah. I mean, it's like in basketball, you know, they, they used international used to have like the trapezoid, um, like the foul lanes. And so the NBA where it's just like kind of straight yeah. up down. And I think they actually wound up changing international to, to match with the NBA. So Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can definitely see that. Yeah, um, like make it one or the other. Yeah, go, go all in on one. Um, here's one from Chase Ford. Uh, he says the Preds should have kept the intermission pedal tavern. Oh, hell no! No, I love the pedal tavern. Are you serious? No, but okay. I say that I did. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote an article about it because the yeah. thing to me is the like when the pedal tavern first came out was in the first game of the season. The Preds were losing it two to one. Uh, and then the pedal tavern came out. Everyone hated it. And then the Preds scored four unanswered goals and won the <laughs> game. So I think that was due to the pedal tavern. Maybe somebody though had a mustard Jersey on and that's what did it. I don't think we should, Maybe should be of the three. There you go. I just, the pedal tavern was so offensive to my sensibilities because I can't think of anything people in Nashville want to be associated with less. It was too on the nose. Like it was too on the nose. I think Uh, it was like one of those things where it's like, you know, they tried to make it like a stereotypical Nashville thing. Whereas like most Mm -hmm. of, most of actual born and bred Nashvillians are like, please Please no. Yeah, no. No, it's the thing we're embarrassed about. It's not the thing that we want to be known for. It's the thing we're embarrassed about. I mean, they're so, oh, everywhere now, but they're so it, that was that was one of the worst kerfuffles for me. That was a that was a fail. Uh, yeah, uh, hell no. Uh, this is more of an NHL one, uh, but uh, George Woodard really likes the uh the arizona coyotes kachina style sweaters um and that kind of brought me into a hot take about i think the preds or not the preds but i think teams around the nhl should bring back more like 90s style jerseys i would be here for that yeah like do you remember like the big trend in like 90s sports where it was like outrageous and like all the jerseys like the toronto raptors had like the weird big fonts and like purple and black stripes everywhere it it looked like a walking starter jacket Um, (laughs) and and then like in like the 2000s it kind of became the trend of no we're gonna go like we're kind of give our like jerseys a little bit of a vintage look kind of a more traditional mm-hmm. and now i feel and because everybody's like oh no those those old ones are awful like those are terrible like those are so ugly what are we thinking and i feel like we're now starting to get back into like the phase where it's like the 90s stuff is cool again oh like, yeah like you know like the um 
like the New York Islanders brought out the the fisherman jerseys uh, as like a throwback. The Coyotes brought back the Kachina style. So I feel like we're trending back that way. And I would love to see like teams find like their most gaudy jerseys from history <laughs> and just be like, we're doing this again. What would the Preds one look like though? Would it be mustard? Because would, would you either do the mustard or bring back the silver sleeves? That's true. I've seen a couple of those at games. I've seen yeah, a couple like of that. those. I don't know. It was unique. Uh, I, I get why they stopped wearing him because they said like too many elements. Like the yeah. the silver was like kind of an actual piece of like silver fabric uh, <laughs> that made the jerseys hard to wear. I remember. I think it was like the San Jose Sharks that like change their style of jersey like they used to have like kind of like shoulder pads and patches mm -hmm. and stuff on it um and then they changed it to just what they have now and when they were asked it was just like for some reason the players just say they're too heavy to wear because there's so much on it huh yeah i think there should be a lot more options for jerseys i do think that the nhl and and these teams should get more creative now, having said that, we shredded the one they got created, yeah. creative on for the stadium series when it first came out. But I do think it would be fun to have more options. And I do kind of like that 90s look. You know, it's I mean, it's going to come back in. It, everything always comes back in. But I do think that'd be kind of a fun look. I like what the NBA does where it's like they have each team has four jerseys and you get mm -hmm. to like alternate between them. And then you can just wear like a bunch of special editions and like yes. back and kind of like a weird like city sort of one. I think like I would love the NHL to do that. I think they're like probably expensive to make and maybe that's why we don't see a bunch of them. But uh, it would be really cool. It would be cool. It'd be kind of cool to see like creatively uh, what what teams can do. Yes, All for right. sure. Yep, I would agree. So, uh, are either of us canceled? Have we not? Have no, each other in each other's eyes. No, no. We're. I think we're still good. Okay, so we I so we can good. do this show tomorrow, right? I believe so. As long as you're not wearing your mustard jersey, I think we're going to be just fine. Uh, I'm going to call my mom <laughs> in from Tennessee right now and see if she can overnight. The, the childhood uh, jersey that's probably hanging somewhere still on the <laughs> closet right now. Um, yeah, big game tonight. Predators and centers, 6 o'clock puck, puck drop. We will have a full recap of that tomorrow. Plus, it's the end of the week, so we'll have cookies for our Predators player of the week. And going to get started making those right now. While you're doing that, would you like to tell everybody where they can find you online? And you can find my work at onthefourcheck.com. And you can find me on Twitter at Ann K underscore Mama on Ice. I'm Nick Morgan. You can find me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. You can also read my work at onthefourcheck.com. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like our video, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let us know your cancelable hockey take. Uh, or just let us know if you have uh, any ideas for a segment you want to see us do in a future episode. That's going to do it for us today on Locked On Predators Podcast. Go check out Locked On NHL and the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Cheers.